Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are again. Once again, this is the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kale, and I am here with Diane and Constance. And it is September the 9th, and I think this is episode 12. We skipped last week because of Labor Day. You know, we do have to take a day off once in a while. Hello, Diane. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi. How's everybody doing? (laughs) Okay. With this episode of the podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about our creative process. What motivates us? What inspires us to create our art and our particular pieces of art? Uh, Diane, you want to start out? What what inspires you? (laughs) Well, for me, mainly it's um, nature. Nature's the biggest factor for my art. Um, I just have grown up outside, you know, being outside all the time and I'm really close to nature and I just love to get all its beauty onto the canvas for others to enjoy too. Um, so that's, that's mainly what I, inspires me. Okay. As far as, uh, the, uh, the actual, uh, process paint with oils you, you also use watercolors sometimes too don't you or? yeah i do mm-hmm. yeah most of the time it's well more recently it's been oil i haven't watercolored in a while but i do occasionally still um i enjoy both mediums it just depends on how i feel that day <laughs> but i've been mostly working on oils lately and i do like to go out and do plein air um, which is you know on location outside and you can get a lot more colors and it's just you have a lot more of the um, feeling and energy of the place that you can put onto the canvas when you're out in it like that. Okay. Um, do you, uh, what's a size? I mean, average size of your canvases, do you paint on large canvases or? Um, I paint anywhere from little ones, like five by sevens or so on up to maybe 36 or something like that but i mean i've done wall murals i've done you know bigger size stuff but most of the things i guess are around maybe uh 12 by 20 or something like somewhere in there okay how long does it take you to uh, complete let's say a, a 12 by 20 how long does it take you to complete something like that it depends on the painting i'm doing and how much detail it has and um it just depends. Some paintings kind of paint themselves and 
other ones don't. <laughs> they take longer. But, I mean, I've been painting, doing artwork for over 40 years, so I can, you know, I mean, I, I don't spend a lot of time drawing too much now. I mean, like, I can draw pretty readily from all the practice I've had over the years, so I don't, it, that part of it doesn't take me as long as it used to. So, I mean, a lot of people tell me I, it looks easy when I paint because I, I can do it without kind of thinking a lot of times. Um, but that just comes from doing it for so long and lots of practice, lots and lots of practice. <laughs> so okay. it can vary, though, depending on how much detail is in the painting. I mean, some, some are really quick. Other ones can take months. It just depends. Okay. Of course, there's always with the oil. There's always that dry, that drying time in there. You've got to, you know. Uh, well, it depends on how I'm working. If I'm going to do ala prima, then it's all wet. It's all wet. Okay. And it's all in one sitting. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. Yeah, ala prima. Exactly. Yeah. yeah that, in, that, in that case, it's all wet and it's all in, at one time. But other paintings, I do. I take time, more time, and let it let each layer dry until I get where I want to be. So it just depends on what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay. Constance, what about you? Now you do a lot of jewelry. You also do some painting. What, uh, what's your main inspiration for, you know, how, how do you come up with some of your jewelry designs? You've got some unique designs. Some designs, uh, the jewelry designs, de it uh, depends on the stone. The when you find a stone, you let the the stones the stone speak to you. You know, it depends on the color, the shape, and then that sort of speaks to you about how you want to set it. You know, do you want to set it in a pendant or a ring? The larger stones usually go in dependents, um, and depending on the kind of stone it is then you know it depends on whether you want to make it a more rustic setting or a more fine setting um it, it just uh if it's a more primitive looking stone then you want to make it look a little more rustic you know with and then if the stone is um more uh i don't know how to describe it they just have different qualities yeah. so then you know, if you want some, something that's just a prettier stone, then you want to set it in a more prettier style of setting. But um, well, I've seen you. The, then, I've seen you use. Uh, you were showing once before. Uh, you made a short video about uh, burning, uh, burning the copper or something, taking a torch and going over over the copper. Do you do that with some of the metal, like if you if, to create a rust type? you know, setting and you know what I'm talking about? Mm -mm. Oh, you had a video <laughs> showing, showing those, those the copper, you take a torch and, and you fire. Oh, you mean coloring the, coloring the metal? Yes. Giving the metal a color? Yeah. Oh, that, that, yeah, that, um, that a lot of times is just, um, I don't, a lot of that stuff, it doesn't really have a stone set in it. It's just, um, okay, that's just for the bracelets and the... the right, yeah. right. That's just painting with fire. I, okay. um, I usually just do uh, stamp work on those bracelets. <clears throat> and those bracelets will have a stamp, stamp design on them. And then after I've shaped them into place, you know, the bracelet or the pendant or whatever they're going to be, then I take a torch and I heat them with the torch until I get the desired color with the torch. Oh. And then I put a um, finish on them to ho hold the color onto the pendant or the bracelet so that the color will stay there. Yeah, you had uh, you posted on Facebook, you'd post a short little video of doing that once. I thought that was fascinating. I didn't know that's how I love, yeah, I love painting with fire. It's really cool. Yeah. But, uh, so, 
get dangerous too, though. I would think. Yeah. Get, <laughs> you got to be careful with fire. Yeah, you get yeah. burned. <laughs> Hurt your studio now, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got to be careful with fire. You don't want to burn your studio down. That's not good. <laughs> Now you also you've been do, posting quite a bit of uh, pastels. I guess you're getting back into your pastels. Uh, yeah, talk, talk more. Tell us, tell us more about that. I mean, you know, what, uh, what inspires you to do pastels? I mean, you posted just some still lives, whatever. But I mean, why? Why did you pick pick a particular like you did some pairs one time? Why? I mean, yeah, you know, what, what motivates you? Well, just doing the studies, trying to get exercising back into pastel work i used to do before i quit doing artwork i used to do a lot of uh, portraits animal portraits and pastels and um i just i just all of a sudden stopped and started doing the jewelry full time and so um i really regret doing that <laughs> So I've started doing the pastels again, trying to get warmed up. And so I'm doing exercises with the pastels, trying to get my art side warmed back up, the painting side warmed back up. So um, I know that's, that. so, that's the way. It's so hot outside right now, I can't do plain air. And I love plain air. And I'm having allergy problems. So until I get the allergy problems and the heat problems straightened out, I'm going to do the still lives to get warmed back up. And, uh, it's incredible. Here we are in the, you know, in the September going on the second week of September and it's still hot here. It's still 90 something degrees outside here. So, which is unusual. It's usually down in the eighties by now, but still, yeah. so I mean, yeah, it'll cool off and then I can go back out. <laughs> so, and yeah, I like plain air on various previous podcast you know you you made reference to your paintings once in a while are, are you getting back into that are you making time for that you making- yeah yeah i'm making time I've, I've got to get ready for the october show of the affair of the heart but um you know i'm still got to keep up the work with the painting so yeah i gotta make making time to well, we're just meeting every week. That's what we're trying to do to each other, you know, inspire each other. To, uh, yeah, to, encourage. To create, you know. Um, I guess it's my turn now, you know. So, so what about you, Clyde? Yeah, <laughs> yeah what about you, Clyde? <laughs> yeah, my, uh, well, I'm the host. I can ask what it, no, okay. It's fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, my inspiration, because I uh, started this art journey again and started creating visual art again was due in fact because of my daughters you know they're young women adults now and uh, there was a period of time where a uh, period of separation where i missed a large portion of their uh, youth and we've uh, you know the last five years kind of like reestablished you know relationship and technology done it with the internet you know doing the face uh uh Facebook uh, uh, vid- video calls frequently, and and uh, when we started uh, this uh, video calls again, the first thing that they both asked about me was about my art, because they remembered when they were little girls, when they were real little, I would draw for them all the time, and I would draw their favorite cartoon characters, and they said, uh, you know, have you, you know, are you still drawing? I, said, I haven't done anything in such a long time. Well, no, you should. So I started back this journey. Then uh, it's like riding a bicycle. You never really forget. But, I, you know, I had to watch a few videos. And uh, then I uh, started you know, investigating that, uh, hey, maybe I can make a career out of this. And, of course, my daughters were, yes, they were all for it, you know. <laughs> so... My inspiration for just creating art, period, is providing something for my a legacy for my daughters. That's my primary purpose of why I put myself through this torture of trying to get <laughs> and trying to get contests and and spending the hours, you know, 
Yeah, I do get enjoyment. Believe me, I it's such a satisfaction. You, you know, when you uh, need a piece of work and everything goes just right. Many times we've uh, we've talked about this, you know, right, girls? <laughs> we've uh, you know, you, you was blind to me. I get excited about you know certain, you know. But having traveled, serving in the U.S. Navy and traveled around the world, that also inspires me, you know, of, of my different places that I've been. So when I'm trying to to uh, come up each week, when I'm trying to come up with a subject. I predominantly work from photos, and I'll look through uh, the a lot of the free, uh, royalty-free uh, online databases, and uh, for photos for subject matter. When I want, and then I'll take I can take three or four photos of an image to create the initial composition. But I'm just looking at the photos just for reference. Like, you know, was it was a chipmunk look like? Uh, you know, was a buffalo look like? And, and uh, or whatever, like recent examples, and then I'll compose and put this together. And I've also occasionally done some works of complete imagination. Boy, those are funny at times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so that's that that's my my motivation. You know, and of course my my inspiration for my work it comes about uh, just living everyday you know everyday events. You know, that's not to say that everything is uh, fun loving, you know, uh, I do. Okay. I like to do what I call, uh, I know I'm going too long. Constance, Constance is yawning, everybody. I think <laughs> You're putting her sleep. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Tattletale. <laughs> What was I saying? You lost my train of thought. Okay, let me get back you did to it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is not warm and fuzzy. I do some serious pieces because you know the events taking place in the world and everything. But I don't want to be standing there with pointing the finger. I figure I let the artwork speak for itself, and I'm trying to, to create works that uh, where the viewer can decide yay or nay, they like it or dislike it, or they or it speaks to them. And I'm just going to leave it at that, you know, instead of me trying to explain it and everything. I, and that's another subject matter. Uh, we've watched <laughs> videos here. What do you think about the, I mean, artists who, they give these long litany, litanies about why they create such and such work. And you think, is that, is that gallery inspired or, or what? Yeah. I'll let you guys say, add, add something to that. Yeah, I don't think you need to explain your work. I think, because um, you're not always going to be there, like standing there with your painting or whatever to, to explain it. So it should create some kind of um, a re an emotional response to the person that's looking at it. And if it doesn't, then it's not for them. I don't think you need to try to stand there convincing them that it's, you know, something <laughs> that they should be interested in or whatever. I think the painting or, you know, or piece of work should kind of speak for itself. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? You know what I'm talking Very about? Very true. I've read it so many times on, on, on blogs and I've seen, uh, you know, uh, online, you know, galleries. And then of course they got the little card by the, you know, by the image and the, where their artists are saying, well, this piece represents the, uh, eternal struggle in life. And I'm like, what the, it's just a bunch yeah, of, yeah, well, some, some, I mean, that's what the artist maybe was thinking when they created it, but that not, that doesn't necessarily mean that's what the viewer is going to see in it. They might see something completely different. Exactly, and, and in a way, if you're telling them the whole story and you know explaining that that's what it is and it can't be anything else, then you're kind of you know, you know and if they don't see that, then they're not going to connect with it. So it's like, yeah, it has to move them. I think first for them to be interested in it, and then if there's some other little story behind where you were as as where your head was at the time when you painted it or where you were when you painted it or something like that then fine you know but they have to connect on some level with it to begin with you know i think 
you know, I mean, some people want might want to know more information about the the painting you did, or you know, just to try to connect better with it or explain it a little bit. But I don't, I, mean, I don't think the majority of people connect with paintings that way. I think it's more of an, emo an emotional response, and I don't think there's a um, an explanation is really necessary. I don't think it is. And that, that gets back to our, you know, our, our creative process, you know, and everything. Uh, I, I don't know, but I've read this before, and I, you know, talking with you two, you know, in the past, we, you know, we got to know each other. But uh, let's let's say for the benefit of our listeners, uh, isn't it true that every work of art is like a little piece of your soul, in a, in a sense, isn't it? Or it, it's a, oh, yeah. They're like your children almost. <laughs> they're they're definitely pieces of you, yeah. When you when constantly you talk about story, I mean we've let, we've watched several uh, videos with uh, you know Stefan Bauman, and uh, you know uh, then we had that great uh, talk with uh, uh, Steve Houston. You know we talked about you know uh, don't close the door, keep your paintings as you know open the door, so the viewers have something you know to. To make to pick up on when I'm all those things are in my mind when I'm when I'm creating yeah well, I think that's true of a lot of paintings um, I think a lot of times the connection that people feel with them is it does go back to your childhood or memory of something that you did or experienced in your life and it kind of reminds you of that and I think that's part of the connection um, that you feel when you see a painting that moves you. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the, the catch is, is uh, I, I guess the next question, the next question uh, the, our, uh, is a good segue into, um, okay, we create art because of something of our past experience or whatever. But what about creating art that we think is going to sell. Is that a good idea to try to cater to the market? Like, like Constance, you mentioned once that you were amazed at how, how many people loves cows and how they were selling, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm surprised you're not doing paintings of cows. I mean, should we try to please them, please a market? Should we work for that or? Work? When you try to do that and if it's not an authentic, um, I did do a painting you of wanna... a cow once, and my sister snapped it up just as soon as I did it. <laughs> <laughs> snapped it up. I guess I should do more paintings of cows. <laughs> I've got cows. I can do paintings of them. You know what? I had somebody that was a neighbor who came and did our air conditioner this weekend because it went out. He came in the studio, and he suggested that I come over to their ranch while they were doing Roundup and mm -hmm. paint on his ranch. Hmm. Kind of a hint to maybe paint some cows. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tempting thought. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but painting something that you think just because you think it's going to sell, you don't have the same right. um, authentic voice in it that you have when it's something that moves you to begin with. Yeah. It's it just comes out out differently. That, yeah. That's. But I do like painting cows because I like cows a lot. <laughs> Just haven't done it yet, you know. Well, like here in I'm Oklahoma, so rusty. I've got to get back in. Here in Oklahoma, you know, painting. Western art is really big, and yeah. though I've been living here for twenty some years. I'm not from here originally, and I don't have any connection to the Oklahoma heritage whatsoever. Now, I've had many people say, "Why well, don't you do some paintings of buffalo?" <laughs> and horses and cows it's hard for me to do it because i have no connection to it whatsoever when you when you're researching something like that you have to have some kind of um experience that makes you want to um put them on the put that spirit or whatever onto canvas it's not just yeah. like it's not just like snapping a picture and, and painting that picture it's different when you're painting. 
But that's a very good point, Diane, when you said the you know making a connection. That's why I when I started this thing, my uh, you know daughters encouraged me to you know start trying to do great work you know professionally. Um, I started out doing quite a bit of uh, monuments you know in Italy you know because I lived it for sixteen years and. I was always, as a kid, I was always interested in the Roman history and everything. And I actually got a chance to go in Rome and those, those, run around in those monuments and run through Pompeii and go up to Rome. And I mean. Yeah, so you have those experiences. Yeah. yeah. Let's wrap this episode up. This uh, episode 12 for September the 9th of the Artist Friends Podcast. But before we go, let's offer our tip of the week. And this time, we're going to, all three of us is going to offer a tip. So we'll start with Constance. What's your tip for the listeners? Okay. My tip of the week is the dailypaintworks.com. It's the first month is free. And then after that, it's $12.95 a month. Uh, it's a place to sell your artwork. Okay. So all right. That's it. It's called, da- da- say it again. Uh, dailypaintworks.com. All right. Okay, so, Diane, what's your what's your tip for our listeners for this week? Hey, let's see. Um, <clears throat> I guess going to what we were we, what we've been discussing is just being authentic with what you're painting. It's really important um, to paint what you are really connected to, and that'll show up on the canvas. Okay. All right. My tip. <clears throat> is persistence. We talk a lot about in our previous episodes, uh, we offer marketing tips and everything. To our listeners, we're not experts at this marketing. We receive information from all across the internet and we share it with each other. That's what this is about. We're just sharing or recycling what we've heard. Some of it works, some of it doesn't work. But the one thing that will work for you is persistence. Keep, continue to create work. Continue to market your work on Instagram, on so all social media platforms, and it will pay off. I have a very live example. I started this process only three years ago, and already since since January, I'm on several platforms. Since January, every single month, I've sold something. Somebody in the world has liked my artwork and bought a print or bought an apparel or home decor item. And then recently, I've entered contest and I won. I had a special recognition for uh, the month of September in one of the contests. And for the first time ever, I am booked up for September, October, November, and December, some kind of an exhibition or some kind of a contest. And this has been because of persistent marketing on the internet. So that's my tip, persistent marketing. You've been listening to the Artist Friend Podcast, episode 12, September the 9th. And these two have got me cracking up. So (laughs) goodbye to everybody. Thanks for listening. Bye, Diane. Bye, Constance. Bye. Good night. Bye, everyone. Bye. (laughs) Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronzan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com that's cj kale at sign mystery-otr.com 
This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.